guys, it's Alan with another bonus video and I have something really, really cool to show you. Look familiar? Yeah, that's because it's Mandalorian armor. And if you don't know what Mandalorian armor is, just think Boba Fett. If you don't know who that is, I can't help you. And better yet, this isn't some fan's cosplay costume. It's being designed by AR500 in collaboration with Heckler and & Koch and many other weapons industry leaders. On top of that, Ryan Flowers, famous for his airsoft version of the Mandalorian armor, will be advising the project. The thing is, we're not really sure whether this is just a marketing ploy for the upcoming shot convention in Las Vegas, or a military prototype, or maybe even both. Now there are no specs out about this armor, but hopefully they'll stick close to the original suits I first fell in love with in the Knights of the Old Republic game. True Mandalorian armor is made of Mandalorian iron, a material that is so strong it can't be cut by a lightsaber. Although Stormtroopers and Clone Trooper armor is technically modeled after Mandalorian armor, it's made of Duraplast. It's kind of like the Chinese knockoff version of Mandalorian armor. Hopefully AR-500 suit is better quality than that. AR-500 is known for manufacturing ballistic plates that can stop 7.62 AK-47 rounds. You're actually probably better off in this stuff than the Duraplast crap. Then there's the iconic T-shaped visor helmet, which is so beautiful. I mean, I don't normally wear a helmet around, but if I had to every day because of some like you know horrific injury, I'd definitely wear this. And it's practical, because the future soldier will most likely have access to a heads-up display, something you already see in most first-person shooters. Uh, just no bonus points meter for kills, because that might cause like a huge increase in war crimes and atrocities. A helmet can house all sorts of gadgets from night vision, GPS maps, rangefinders, translucent AI friends, you get the point. Most of these things are actually already being researched by SOCOM in their Talos project. It's basically really going to suck to be a terrorist in the future. My only criticism of this helmet though is the visor shape. The iconic T-shape, while very popular in bronze and medieval age battlefields, is kind of archaic for the modern battlefield, where situational awareness is key, especially if you're fighting in an urban area. Although I, I guess you could solve that with cameras and wide-angle lenses. So guys, let me know what you think. Will we see this Mandalorian suit on the battlefield one day, and how much money would you pay for something like this? And as usual, if you like this episode, please don't forget to subscribe and like. And as always, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech. So the shortlist for young Han Solo is out. Uh, if you didn't know, yes, Star Wars is making a Han Solo spin-off movie. Their theory, but worth a little consideration. John Boyega did say that the next movie will be way darker than The Force Awakens.